gonna get adjusted here. All right, hello, Grace Ray family. This is Jason, um, and thank you for tuning in to another edition of uh, Sunday School On Demand. I, don't know, I think I change the title every single time. Uh, but as I said, um, I'm Jason. Um, I'm on staff uh, with uh, Grace Way Baptist, and for the past few weeks, I've been uh, providing um, uh, not so short. I'm trying to get them short. I think sometimes, but. Um, uh, just going over our Sunday school lessons that we were in before um, all of this happened, and we had to uh, uh, quarantine ourselves and 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 uh, take you know take take measures and and uh, and uh, and stay at home. And so, um, if you've been tuning in, um, we've been uh, been going over um, these past few weeks. Uh, like I said, we picked up uh, with our semester of Sunday school um, with the, the book that we're in, um, Bible Studies for Life, um, uh, the spring. 2020 uh, our first study was a uh, holy vocabulary and we just ended that last week um, and so um, we're moving to a new uh, study uh, we'll be doing um, study two uh, and it's gonna be uh, dealing with messy relationships uh, so I'm kind of excited about this one um, this one kind of gets more to a, a more uh, if, if you're not familiar with the Bibles for life they kind of start of a kind of a higher thinking um, a way of of approaching uh, in God's word, um, and then usually the second study is more of a practical way of how we, how does that look in our everyday lives? And so we're going to be talking about relationships, and it's not just a relationship, you know, as far as romantic or anything like that, but relationships with our kids, uh, with you know, with our wives or, or husbands, um, but you know, with our family, our brothers, our, our, our sisters, uh, our our parents, um, but also with our friends and our coworkers. Um, uh, you know, uh, we know relationships. Uh, dealing when you have uh, two people who uh, most of you know uh, as human beings we tend to be more self-focused a lot of times and whenever you're dealing with people those things can get messy when um, you know when you have two people who's focused on what they want uh, and the other person's focused on what, what they want you're supposed to be in this relationship whatever it is a co-worker relationship or husband and wife or, or a parent uh, and, and child and so um, for the next uh, f uh, few weeks uh, and hopefully Soon uh, we'll be doing this in uh, person um, as as they start to we start to kind of uh, normalize and and uh, and and not have to be at home uh, is is the thing. But you know, it, uh, for the next few weeks um, we'll be in uh, learning from Jesus, uh, learning from Christ, and, and how you know our relationships, how we should treat that. And so, um, if you are in the book, uh, if you do have the book, if you still have it with you, which I would think if you had it with you. Uh, the beginning of this you probably still have it with you at your home uh, but um, it's okay if you don't have it um, uh, we're going to be in, in John in the book of John um, I'm going to sit back here and get a little bit just I don't think I can sit up straight without having a, my back supported uh, but we'll be in the book of John um, and uh, for those who do have the book uh, we're going to be starting the lesson starts at page 96 I believe and let me flip back to it yeah page 96 well that's the introduction um, uh, but the, uh, for the study, but the actual lesson will start on page 98. Um, but for those who um, who don't have the books and want, but do want to follow along um, in, in their Bibles, uh, we'll be in John chapter 15 uh, for this study. Um, that's going to be our passage. And um, the point um, that we're going to be, you know, coming back to is, um, is, is like I said, the session is going to be on love and how that, we're, you know, how that uh, to let love permeate every uh, every relationship we're in. Because um, that's, as Christians, um, you know that's um, that's what should be permeating, and we're going to talk more about how how that um, should be, you know, how our relationship with Christ um, should also push through and affect how we relate with those around us. And so, um, I'm going to go ahead and pray uh, real quick, and we'll get into uh, the study. Um, but um, uh, Heavenly Father, God, is just that I thank you for this time. Um, that I've been able to come uh, together and just on, in video form and and share uh, not only you know the, the great study that we that we have here but also just my heart in, in these matters God um, it's been um, um, uh, very awesome to be every week to, to be able to talk to I, I know just a camera for me at the moment we got just to, to know that there's other people that are watching this and and God I just I thank you for that time that um, that you've given us uh, as a church to still continue to grow close to each other, even though physically we've been away from each other. Uh, I, I pray that um, during this, that uh, we just come together. I know our relationships with each other is just, it's gonna be so much stronger because, not because of anything that we've done, but because of what you've been doing in our lives. 
um, thank you for all this and, and just uh, help this uh, this short amount of time just to, to go well um, and that um, my words are clear and uh, and uh, and that we we understand what you are trying to tell us in your word thank you for everything you've done in Jesus name amen all right so um, like I said I'm gonna try to do this um, uh, a little bit, I think, quicker than what I have been. I think uh, my wife always just says, you know, you just like to talk, and you're, you're literally just talking to a camera at the time. And um, but maybe I do just like to talk. And so, and I'll be honest, I don't get back on these videos and see who's watching them. I don't think I can actually see who's watched them or how many people watched them. So it could literally just be one person watching this. Uh, it could be no people watching. I don't know. Um, maybe when we get back, you guys can do some feedback and let me know if you guys actually watch this. Uh, but I think I'm too scared to get on YouTube or. Uh, or anything like that to see um, uh, how much you know views these have. I've never actually done a YouTube uh, channel or anything like that, so um, that was never my thing. But um, uh, but anyways, um, now that I've probably thoroughly embarrassed myself, um, the first question, um, and uh, for those who are kind of new to this, um, I, sometimes I'll ask the questions. Um, I do encourage you um, if you want to pause the video right now and, and find um, a pen and, and, and or a pen or pencil and paper or journal. Uh, I really encourage you just to write answers down to these questions. Uh, it's kind of different. These questions are more for a discussion and a group. Um, of course, that's not uh, what this is for, but I think it was very beneficial just to write uh, down. If you've never journaled or just wrote things down, um, there really is um, uh, a difference uh, to be able to write something down. It associates you know, something that you've learned or especially God's word that you can come back and meditate on it or look at your answer um, you know, later on, things like that. So. Um, but uh, this is kind of, you know, all these first questions are usually not uh, super spiritual. They're kind of just a setup uh, for a practical, uh, you know, real world, you know, thing to, to associate. But um, since we're here, um, it says, um, and if you have your books, you're probably already looking at a, a beautiful picture of brownies. And I'll be honest, uh, I don't think I have any other answer. But um, it says, uh, what foods do you like best straight out of the oven? Um, brownies. I mean, brownies are good. And um, if there's anything in my brownies, like walnuts or anything like that, that's wrong. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I like just a brownie. Uh, but no, seriously. Um, but you know, if any, there's uh, warm bread. Um, I don't. Uh, we don't bake a lot, uh, but I love warm bread out of the oven, things like that. So, um, um, but um, the uh, uh, the uh, the writer um, here kind of talks about. Um, uh, kind of a, a scenario of, of uh, relationships and how, um, you know, uh, kind of like uh, if you're thinking about bread, um, and not a certain type of bread, I like a crust on a bread, but um, if you're thinking about just like a, a bread that you get, um, uh, you know, uh, from Kroger or something like that, you're going to, you know, use for sandwiches or peanut butter jelly sandwiches, things like that, um, just your regular sliced bread. Um, not many people eat the ends. I can't think of anybody who eats the ends, um, unless you absolutely just want that really good sandwich. You know it's not going to be the best. Um, but uh, I know my, my boys don't like the crust on their sandwiches usually. I think most children don't. Um, and uh, one time I tried to sneak. Um, I think we had one slice of bread, two ends, and Gabe really wanted a, a, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And one time I tried to you know, sneak it. The the hill of the bread on there of course he's like what is this you know dad this you gave me this gross piece of bread um but um but like like that that bread that nobody usually wants those ends those hills because um, they usually end up being stale because they're usually i think they really sit on top of that they keep the other pieces of bread kind of fresh because you know they're pushed together um <clears throat> and so uh but like that you know our our our, our, our relationship sometimes uh, and we've, you know, I know I can think of some people, I think really hard of relationships that just went stale uh, for whatever reason they went in and out. Maybe it was a proximity thing. Maybe it was, you know, um, I was in the Navy um, uh, uh, right out of high school. And so um, I still have some people I kind of talk to, but as years go by, uh, it's been, it's been uh, uh, more than a decade since my last, uh, uh, since I was last actually active duty. Um, you know, you have, you know, very close relationships, um, and it's still contact some of those, those people today, but they're not what they used to be, um, in there. But, you know, we've all experienced relationships where there's a falling out or, <coughs> or, you know, just kind of get stale. Um, and that really has to do with 
um, human nature, um, that the, the sin that we live in. I mean, uh, a lot of we're you know as as humans as in general we're very selfish, we're very self centered a lot of times. And when you try to get two people together and have to survive together, um, you know if one person's thinking for themselves, the other person's thinking for themselves. But there's supposed to be a beneficial relationship happening. Um, things can usually get pretty messy, and that's what we're going to be talking about messy. And so. Uh, messy relationships, but um, let's uh, let's go to uh, John fifteen uh, nine through ten, and um, and I think we're gonna I'm gonna read um, um, no we'll, we'll read the, the two verses at a time, but we're just gonna read the, uh, John uh, fifteen and then nine through ten, and uh, and could have a quick discussion uh, on that. Uh, but in John fifteen, uh, Jesus is talking. Of course, this is the, uh, um, the gospel uh, written by John, um, and I'll mention this later. Uh, John, John has a lot to write on, on love. Um, of course, um, he was known as the, the beloved uh, apostle. Um, uh, you know, John, um, uh, you know, had a very close relationship with Jesus, um, as well as, you know, did uh, the other 12, um, but I think especially him uh, in particular. But um, John writes... Um, in verse 9, he says, As the Father has, has, has loved me, so have I. And this is Jesus talking again, like I said. Um, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Um, what I want us to focus on um, in, in is that key word that to continue? Um, it's also very much, um, you know, goes on for abiding. Abiding means, you know, to dwell or to live or to be per a permanent residence, you know, of of that. And so, what what um, Christ is saying um, here is, you know, as the Father has loved me and I have loved you, continue in my love. Um, and as Christians, what that practically is is you know we we all know that once we have called on on jesus christ because of his love he died for us um so that we can be saved from our sins so that we don't have to be stuck in our sins we talked about that with with the holy vocabulary in the early and what that means you know salvation means and all all those things reconciliation and, and grace and and all that but because of that we have a relationship with christ now um and in any relationship you know we you have to spend time with that person depending on the the level of relationship well this is you know as christians we know this is the most important relationship in our lives um and is to be a follower of christ to be a disciple of christ and he's saying this is a continuous thing to continue in my love abide there be there stay there be filled with me um uh, and that's where this starts all of our relationships with with our wives uh husbands uh children uh friends families co-workers um the the you know the short relationships you may just have with with, with a neighbor or you know um um anytime we relate with another human being but maybe it's just for a short time we would never maybe see that person again god wants us to come up from a from a place where it starts with his love and we know that in, in First John, First um, John four, chapter four, I believe, um, you know, he, you know, John talks about that love. What does that look like for a Christian? And what, you know, what, how does that start? And with that initiation of, of God's grace and, and God, and, and the simple thing, and there's comes a point where he's like, God is love. It's not that you know we loved him, or it's not that we we knew what love was before God. Uh, it's because God is love that we also love. Um, and that's what it's one of my chapter four of first if you if you have time to go go to it. Um, like I said, and this is the same, you know, John who, who wrote this um, this gospel. Um, it you know, that is one of the things that always drives me. Um, it, it later on describes, you know, the only people, way people can see God. Um you know, uh, in John's time and also in our time is when they see his love abiding in us and us abiding in his love. And that means spending time with Jesus and not just, you know, checking off a box in devotionals. And uh, I think probably preaching to myself right now for this, for this one, 
uh, but really spending time with him, getting into his word, making a, a purposeful time to get into his word and, and letting the word get into you and, um, and, and meditating on that. And, and not only just inviting Jesus for that, those short 10 minutes or 15 minutes, however long you, you read scripture and, and pray, um, uh, and, and you know that's not the end of our relationship with Christ, but to continue in His love, to continue with that Scripture, and then say, you know, Jesus, come along with me to my work, um, which right now, what well, has been for a year, is you know in my bedroom office. Uh, but come along with me as I as I talk with my children. If we abide in His love, He will be with us continuing, continuous. He's always with us. Um, but I think it's how much are we paying attention that He's there, um, and 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 just wanting to be close to him um, that's how, how how it starts and so that's what Jesus is saying you know the, the, God, the father loves me I I love you and we'll go further on to to what that love what Christ is talking about that love and we, and we know as Christians we know this, this story uh, the greatest love that was ever proven um, to you know ever exist was was Christ coming in human flesh only for 33 years uh, later to die on a cross for us no greater love has ever been has ever been seen because of what God has shown for us um, and, 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 and his being of his, of his son coming down um, and so but that's the love we need to abide in that perfect unconditional he loves us so much no matter who we are what we are and that's how we should approach our relationships if we have that love permeating with us, filling us up every day, um, that's a, the best way to start. Because like I said, you know, John later says in, in First John, you know, we didn't have love first. God had love for us first. That's how we know to love. And so that example of Christ and, and, and being with him uh, is where we start with that. And so um, um, question two, it says, what do we tend to expect from people who love us? You know, what do we tend to expect from people who love us? Um, I think, um, I think, you know, obviously we, if we know that someone, you know, says they love us, we would expect um, that they're happy when we're around, um, that they want to spend time with us, things like that, you know. And so that kind of goes to our end, you know, if we do love Christ, um, because, you know, he loves us and we want to show that same love for him, we want to spend time with him. You know, it's a joyous, uh, we're, we, we have this continuous joy to know that he loves us. And, and so, in first, in, in, in uh, going to, uh, back to, to verse 11 in chapter 15, it says, These things have I spoken unto you, um, that, that uh, my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. Now, so now we're talking about joy, right? Um, and I think, um, as human beings, we understand that love and joy go together, right? I mean, think of it the first time that, you know, you started uh, dating your spouse or, or, or realized that, um, that you're soon to be spouse, you know, uh, or, um, or, you know, a relationship if, you know, you have a girlfriend right now or, or a fiance or anything like that. When you first realize that they, they maybe kind of like you, maybe they kind of, you know, maybe they love you. Maybe you're not to that point yet, but those feelings of joy that would sprout up just to know, um, you know, you get to spend time with this person that you're, maybe it's a new thing, you know. Um, and, and maybe, man, you know, sometimes, I mean, I know relationships, especially, you know, people who, you know, marriage uh, can sometimes seem like that's kind of still a piece of bread sometimes. But, but it, man, if you have a marriage that you still have that same kind of spark, and I know I do sometimes with Tiffany, I mean, and that's kind of the thing, you know, to, to keep that going. That's not something that comes from us, that, but it's God. But, you know, think of those times when, you know, those that joy would spark up just to know. Um, that you know, uh, oh, I get to call this person, or um, um, you know, wh whatever, whatever it is, we know that joy is 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 associated with love, um, and so this is what he's saying. You know, I'm speaking these things that that joy might remain in you, and that uh, joy might fall uh, be, uh, be full. Uh, this is my commandment: that you love one another as I have loved you. That you love one another as I have loved you. And so now that we have, we know we have the love of God. We know that we can need to, we continue in his love to get his word into us, to, to, to let him, to, to love on us and, and understand what he's done for us every day. We can now take that love 
to our fellow fellow men, our, 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 our wives, uh, our husbands, our, our children, our, our co-workers, um, our friends, uh, and we can show them that love, that, uh, that unconditional, unselfish love. Um, and this is, this is where it kind of gets a little hard because, you know, we're the vessels of that and we're very imperfect. We're not, uh, you know, God knows that we're not him. Um, 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 but, uh, you know, he says, he says this, um, I, I like, um, so one of my favorite authors to read, um, is C.S. Lewis, um, um, him and Toking, um, of course they were, they were friends. Um, there are some of my favorite authors, a uh, new favorite author I've been recently, uh, being very much enjoying on, on a different, uh, kind of a different, uh, he's from a uh, different nation, but, uh, is Diedrich Bonhoeffer, who's a German, uh, preacher during, uh, the, uh, during World War II. Uh, it's a lot of on, on grace and love uh, and, and discipleship and, and sacrificing the, the cost of that. Um, but um, uh, in, in, in a book called Surprised by Joy, which I, I have, I've read this before and it was when I was, uh, I think, a very young man, um, uh, probably in my early 20s. Um, but he writes, <clears throat> um, it's concerning um, um, his, uh, he talks a lot about his conversion to Christ. If you don't know anything about C.S. Lewis or anything like that, um, he had a very late conversion and a very late um, entering relationship and, and, and following Christ um, uh, experience uh, um, um, in, in life. But um, he writes some beautiful things uh, in, in most of his, his books. Of course, you know, he's also famous for uh, Chronicles of Narnia as well. Um, but, um, um, <clears throat> but he says, um, there's an expert that, excerpt that says, surprised by joy. It says, uh, you must picture me. And he's talking about himself because it, it took him a very long time to to see his need for Christ and once he started seeing that need uh, for Christ um, he started to kind of experience um, moments of, of, of joy and finally whenever he started to realize I need Christ and, and he was you know he uh, accepted that Christ you know he needed Christ and and what he did on the cross and, and into that and started to follow him um, 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 fully as, as his Lord and Savior um, um, he talks about that that moment, but he says, uh, uh, "You must picture me alone in that room." Uh, and this is this is kind of whenever he's leading and struggling with his, you know, struggling with, with, um, with uh, you know these questions of the, you know, uh, this this need for Christ. Um, uh, night after night, feeling whenever my mind lifted even for a second uh, from my work, uh, the steady, unrelenting approach of him, him being. Being, being Jesus, uh, who I so earnestly desired not to meet, uh, that which I greatly feared had at last come upon me. I gave in. I admitted that God was God and knelt and prayed, perhaps that night, the most dejected, uh, reluctant convert in all of England. So God continued to work on, on Lewis, on Lewis uh, uh, soon calling him into a personal relationship with with his son, uh, and Jesus Lewis found the fullness of joy, and spent the rest of his life writing about it. And like I said, he was a late comfort, but the the things that that he wrote about, um, I mean, you could tell, um, even with Carlton and Arnie, you can just tell of the joy that he had just he had found even late at life. Uh, of, of, of finally, you know, reluctantly, he says, uh, he almost describes it another way, but he was just dragging and screaming, um, um, cause he was, he, he was very stuck in it. He was an intellectual, he was agnostic. Um, it, it took him forever just to admit, you know, okay, God is a God, you know, he is the one God. And then, you know, and then, um, <clears throat> of course with help from, the, from his friend, especially, you know, J.R. Tolkien, um, J.R. Tolkien, um, um, and so he describes himself very much, but once he entered that personal relationship with Jesus, he found that love that he never knew and that joy. Um, and so, you know, do, you know, do you exhibit the joy of the Holy Spirit? Is your outlook on life refreshing to those around you? And that's, and a lot of people don't, you know, realize that's an important part of, of being a disciple of Christ is to have that joy permeating it because of the love that God has shown us, the grace that he has shown us, should just have joy that just permeates any any situation. Um, do we go through hard times? Yes. We're going through one right now. Um, 
Um, but I would say, uh, you know, as, as I think that one of the greatest and, and tragic oxymorons I can think of is, is a Christian or a, someone who, who claims to be a disciple of Christ, who, just, who claims to basically follow love himself, you know, love itself, you know, God is love. And, and someone who claims to, to be a part of that, but always walks around with like a scowl on their face or, or is never happy or not a pleasant person to be around. I would say that's the greatest tragedy and oxymoron I can think of is, is a Christian who is, is not joyful to be around. Um, <coughs> so question three says, um, how does your relationship with God impact your relationship with others? Um, and that's, that's really the key. I mean, that's, that's the, the point, you know, we have this relationship with, with God, the creator of all things, um, a God who, who has done everything, who, who, who gave everything, who at the cost of everything gave us grace and love and salvation. Um, when we are in a relationship with him, it should impact the relationships we have with others. And so, you know, what is that relationship like? Um, how is that impacting others? I think if, you know, and, and that's how, uh, as far as a Christ, if our relationship, um, you know, by our own choice becomes, starts to become stale or apathetic with our relationship with God, you can start to see that will reflect in your relationships with others. Um, especially for those who claim you know, Christ, um, your relationships will not be going, they'll be going the same way. Um, and, and, and others, others see a difference um, as Christians when we have that joy in our lives especially like times like this and and um, you know just talking I love to talk to my co-workers you know uh, about just kind of um, some of the things that you know that there's they're starting to to find out about themselves or about their their, their children or something like that I know it's as, as believe me as, as kids as a father of, of young two young boys um, it has been challenging uh, to be you know, we're working on, on this new month now uh, of, you know, being at home all the time. I'm still working full time um, at, at home like I always have. Um, and for most of the days, they're with me as well. Tiffany's having to work uh, as well. She's uh, essential and, uh, and, and works at a daycare to help with other essential uh, parents who need you know, child care. And so it has been rough, but the the joy I've found just in, in simple things, um, you know, just um, um, Dash has been, he's, he's starting to get that wild toddler about him. Um, uh, but this, uh, it's been kind of rare um, that he just will sit uh, in my lap or, or lay and, and cuddle with me. Um, but uh, today after after he got up from a nap, he just kind of was in a mood and he just wanted to sit and, and, and you know, just to be able to sit there for 30 minutes of just the joy that was feeling, you know, that's, that's the kind of, uh, joy that that God wants to keep on putting on to us and, and he wants us to not only have that joy um, you know make us you know happy and it's not about happiness it's but it's it's about being complete and, and knowing that our our trust and and no matter what is going on we have a God that loves us and that he wants the best for us and that's what that joy we can spread to others and people do notice that even if you think you know um, you know, they do notice that. And, you know, so what is, how is our relationship? How are we forcing, you know, making a purpose, purpose, you know, our relationship with God, are we making a purpose to make it affect and impact our relationship with others uh, is, is the question. Um, um, so let's, let's go to, uh, and, and I haven't been in the pages, but um, go to go to page if you do have the book. Go to page one hundred four, the, the next page, and we'll we're gonna read uh, finish. Uh, uh, so John fifteen uh, verses thirteen, and this is this is how Christ um, um, kind of ends this. Uh, uh, how how we kind of end this, but he says, um, "Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends." You are my friends. Uh, if you do whatsoever I command you, so I do want to just go back and read the the scripture that we have just in entirety. So, uh, starting with verse nine, it says, "As a father has loved me, as the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue 
you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. Verse 11, these things have I spoken unto you, that may, uh, that my joy might remain in you, and what your joy is. And that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, uh, if you do whatsoever I command you. And this is not a condition that God is putting on it. It's more of, um, it's more of, um, of a state of being. When we're God's friends, we will be listening to and obeying Him. Uh, when you are uh, married to your spouse, um, you know, that's not, it's, it's a state of being. It's not a conditional thing. You know, just because you and your spouse have an argument, do you stop being your spouse? Just because, you know, that kind of thing. And I understand, um, you know, in America, we, you know, the, the divorce is, is very rampant. Um, it's, you know, it's a very high percentage of, uh, rate, um, these days. Um, but that's not, you know, it, as Christians, we know that that's not, you know, what it is. And that's not how our relationship with God is not on condition. God initiated his love towards us first. It's nothing we did or deserve. Grace was initiated to us and that love that was given to us first. And so our state of being as, as we are. God's children. Nothing is going to change that. Um, and so because of that, we want to obey him. We want to, to take his love, his joy, and spread it to and spread it to others so that we can start um, you know, speaking to other people's lives and telling them what Christ has done for us and showing that love to others just by even just small things. Can can start that 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 impact in a relationship can can maybe even mend a relationship that was broken. Um, it always starts with that small step, and it's and and and, we, and Christ gets down to it, um, you know. And this is this is before he he shows us what ultimately love has. You know, love is so important. A relationship can be so important that sacrifices need to be made. Um, you know, it says no greater love has has a man for someone else than to lay down their life for their friends. Um, that that is the you know that's and he's 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 basically saying you know that's what I'm going to be doing. And um, I don't think most of us will probably never have to be in an opportunity where we would have to sacrifice our own lives uh, to save someone. But I've seen it in humanity time and time again, um, and and you can look at. <clears throat> History and, and even read the Bible of men and women who, who, who knew that showing Christ's love was so important, even more important than life itself, their physical life, their physical well-being, um, and that's is that's how we're approaching relationships with our wives, with our kids. You know, that's a very good place to start and 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 start to work on on the messiness that relationships can 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 be. Um, and so, I want to uh, go to, and we'll finish out with this, um, but um, page 107, if you do have it in your book, uh, but if not, you can, uh, I encourage you to, to write this uh, to down as kind of a list of, there's always these uh, live it out louds, basically how are we going to take what we just learned, just studied about in God's word and start applying it to our lives this week. Um, and so, <clears throat> uh, it is... Um, um, so live it on. So here are, are three ideals to boost your level of love within your lives for others. Um, give a small gift. Uh, give an unexpected gift uh, to someone who needs it. Uh, attach a simple note. Thank you for uh, playing an important role in my life. Um, those small things, just small things, can mean the world to people. Um, and, and, and it's I've I've received gifts like that. I've um, I wish I, I I want to give more. Like just to be there because I mean sometimes we just don't know what someone's going through um, at a time and, and it really can't open up just small gestures I've, I've I mean I, I have friends now you know that um, just even um, some of them are my neighbors I've started to meet over this month um, and just and, and become closer with it just started with a small like hello 
you know, or, you know, uh, you know, I, I've seen you, you know, in the neighborhood, I know, but now we're all stuck here together and, and we keep on seeing each other, you know, um, you know, or, you know, uh, you know, your dog's awesome or something like that. Just, um, you know, when's something that you've just, just done a small yesterday that wasn't about you, but it's all about that person. Uh, and, and just kind of being bringing that joy into their, into their lives and so you know give a small gift uh, reach out um, reach out um, so think of a relationship that um, maybe has become stale or e even hostile um, you know unfortunately that's that's life I mean sometimes those things do happen um, and um, uh, you know uh, but you know, make make a phone call uh, to see if you can revive or refresh that connection. Um, you know, a phone call, a Zoom call, FaceTime, um, uh, Facebook Live. You know, whatever. It, you know, you know, try to connect. And what, a, and like I said, what a more perfect time. I know this is a very hard time, and and you know, serious things are, are happening. We we know that, especially in our country and around the world. Um, and um, I, I know that there's suffering, true suffering, but there's also things that are coming that are, 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 are can be joyful, uh, even in these hard times. And just to be able to reach out, I mean, what better excuse to say, you know, I just wanted, to, I was thinking about it. You know, I just wanted to check on you. How are you doing? Um, even if that relationship's gone stale or you haven't talked to someone, uh, I think you know, the, the, a better time right now is you know to show concern, you know, for that person that. You know, you may once in a relationship and maybe still love, uh, but yeah, reach out. Um, and he, and and this is uh, how you know Jesus um, ended his talk about love. But it says, make a major sacrifice. Think of something that hinders your 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 closest relationships. Um, so the, those ones, um, you know, who obviously you know name the people who you've been spending a month with, right? Uh, your closest relationships. Uh, mine would be you know my wife and, and my two boys. Um, you know. Um, but you know what you know is you know relationships um, you know that what, what are some things that's hindering that um, um, this has some things uh, like golf club salon appointments I don't have any things but you know um, I'm gonna speak I don't know people watching you know um, of my generation but you know video games or um, um, you know being stuck on you know a phone constantly in front of your face or uh, uh, TV programs uh, Pot, you know, whatever, uh, money, money issues, car, you know, um, um, hobbies, things like that, you know, is there something that we could get rid of or limit or something, you know, something that affect, um, you know, if, if it is, if there's something that's causing a strain in the relationship or, or something that's, that's causing you not to spend time with someone, uh, you're close to your, your kids or your wife or, or your brother, your sister, you know, your mother, your, your, you know, get rid of it. Because in the end, you know, is is you know get, hitting the golf links more important, going to be a more permanent thing, or or reaching one more level on a video game, or um, you know whatever it is, it's not. Christ proved his love when he died for us on the cross, um, and he did that for our salvation. Um, ult you know, ultimately, and uh, but it's also an example of how we are supposed to love, like him. And so, um, and so that's uh, that's where we're going to leave it um, for to um, uh, for today. Um, so I, I thank you for uh, joining me, um, and uh, for those who are watching, um, um, it's, it's awesome to be able to do this because I know um, you know uh, we do. Uh, have the services and stuff uh, that's you know I'll, I'll watch it at the same time at, at 10 30 but um, I think this has come in a good way and uh, hopefully we get some more feedback to see you know if, um, how this went um, uh, but to be able to to share this and, and, and know that you know people can just watch at their convenience but thank you for joining me um, I'm gonna uh, uh, say a prayer for us and uh, and uh, and uh, but I'll, I'll talk to you guys next week um, we have uh, we'll have another lesson uh, ready for you guys next week. Uh, we'll be talking about encouragement. Be, you know, encourage um, is, is a very important part of relationships. And, and all these things are be very linked together. Um, and so, um, uh, because, you know, and the, the, it's very important to start off with that, that love. Uh, but um, I thank you, and uh, let's go ahead and pray. 
And uh, Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you for uh, the love that you showed us. Um, God, that you are just, you you have the perfect love. Um, and, and it's not just for us, but we are to be filled with your love so that we can can take that love and, and share it with others. Um, to, to show your the joy that you have given us um, because of that love um, that um, and and to just let that spill out to, to those around us and to have that love that doesn't uh, that we can beyond uh, you know take that love and, and let just be a powerful uh, motivation that doesn't have to be about us anymore but it can be about other people um, I just thank you for that in Jesus name amen all right well thank you um, stay safe uh, stay helpful um, or healthy sorry and uh, and uh, I'll talk to you uh, next time thank you